by Allstate, whose policies now include protection for your home, your family, as well as your car. You're in good hands with Allstate. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now an exceedingly charming man who has made the Broadway musical the happiest girl in the world, the happiest show in the world, our own Captain Hook, Cyril Richard. And now a lady who needs no introduction whatsoever and for whom I have the greatest respect and admiration, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now I'd like to introduce a gentleman on my left whose syndicated column is sent out all over the country by King Features Syndicate, Bennett Cerf. Very big week for our panel moderator this week because he's one of the top newsmen in on the triumph of the astronaut the other day. And he also picked the winner of the Derby right on the nose. And he's so triumphant about that, he's a little hoarse himself tonight. <laughs> Mr. John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I didn't think he dared, but he did. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. It's nice to have Mr. Richard with us. Thank you. And I must say that uh, that's probably the last kind thing you'll hear for the next 30 <laughs> minutes, sir, only because of the company you keep. We're nice. so intent upon giving uh, Arlene and Dorothy and Bennett a hard time that you get caught up in the toils of it, too. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this word from Ed Reimer's speaking for all. And now let's meet our first con now let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? George Coke. Is that right, sir? Uh, Mr. Coke, where are you from? Uh, Chester, Pennsylvania. Chester, Pennsylvania. Well, it's nice to have you with us. May I present the panel? Coke? Would you join me over here, sir? Do you know uh, how we keep score on what's my line? I think so, sir. All right, then let's let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mr. Coke is salaried and he deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Coke, do you have anything to do with outer space? No. A uh, small conference. Uh, we feel here, Dorothy, because this covers such a broad area that um, we don't want to be charged subsequently, you know, with misleading the panel. <laughs> Having anything to do with outer space. Now, this could, you know, take in the whole area of communications, mach the machining of, of uh, vehicles, etc., etc. In that broad mm -hmm. context, we'll have to give you a qualified right. yes. Do you work chiefly on the ground, Mr. Coke? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> Mr. Koch, did you play any part whatever in the recent launching of our astronaut? Yes. Uh, but you did not do it on the ground, Mr. Koch. Did you have anything to do with picking him up after he had landed in the sea? Yes. Were you with the, in the helicopter that picked him up? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> you were, had nothing to do with the helicopter that picked him up. Uh... And I can rule out the carrier. You weren't associated in any way with the carrier at sea that he oh. went to. That was uh, one of those double 
triple, quadruple negatives, and you just give her, yes, you were, and the answer is no, so that's three down and seven to go. <laughs> Mr. Richard? Uh, then, Mr. Kirk, you were on the carrier. Yes. Uh, you... You would, yes, you wouldn't be the captain of the carrier, no. would you? No. <laughs> the captain of the carrier, four down and six to go, Miss Gilgallon. Uh, well, did you talk to him after he got aboard? Yes. Uh, do you have any title besides mister? Yes. Are you a doctor? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, are you an officer in the United States Armed Forces, sir? Yes. Would it be in the Marines? No. Six oh. down and four to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> are you a commander? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Richard. Are you a reporter? No. <laughs> Eight, down <and> two. <laughs> Eight down and two to go, Mr. Kilgallen. Well, are you with the Navy? Yes. You're not the captain admiral. of the ship. Are you an admiral? Yes. Oh! <laughs> well, we were shooting too low, weren't we? <laughs> well, it must have been a thrilling moment. That is well, have we got it? Is there more? Admiral Koch of the... Uh... Right. Commanding officer of Task Force... Carrier, it's Carrier Force 18, is it, sir? Yeah, well, we'll throw the cards over. I've got to give it to you, panel. Actually, you reached for it right away, and it was the particularity of, of uh, Rear Admiral Koch's position that you lost. He is the commander of uh, Carrier Division 18, which was the Lake Champlain and her escorting craft. Yes. Now, if I get off base here, you knock me down quickly. And it was the uh, Admiral's Force that did that wonderfully skillful job of being unseen, and I think it was, what, eight minutes, less than eight minutes, sir, when you had the, the capsule out of the water and back back? The capsule was out in about four minutes, and we had the uh, had, uh, Shepherd back on board. On board in about eight minutes, and it was one of the great and exciting moments. <laughs> I know, sir, that um, you don't need to be told that all of the whole country is very proud of the part that you played with your, your staff and your, uh, the crews of your many ships under your command in that exciting moment. Uh, we got some sense out of the television and radio transmissions from your, your um, carrier division, the excitement that you felt down there. But I, I think that perhaps the greatest thing was, and I want to get the sequence of it, and you're here so that we can get the sequence, did, did Commander Shepard get out of the helicopter and just casually walk over to the, the capsule to get his, his space helmet, which he left inside? He did. That was totally unplanned. The doctor was to keep him away from everybody at first and take him down to the debriefing room, but he wanted to get his helmet out first and make sure that the clock that he wanted to keep for his own was intact. Oh, that's just great. Yeah. That's wonderful. I know that the, the uh, training of the astronauts took a period of two years. How much training did you have to do with your recovery division, which it actually was, so that... Um, the destroyers and the carrier that we had was actually about uh, four days. The Marines, however, that picked him up, uh, MAG-26, they had been working with the astronauts, and, and Coons, who actually picked him up, uh, had been working almost two years. With the, the astronauts? With the astronauts. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, speaking through you to the... Ins entire United States Navy. I must say, sir, that the part the Navy played in that great day's activities was magnificent, and uh, we all take our caps off to you. I think the Navy term is well done, and it was indeed well done. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I might say that uh, Rear Admiral Koch himself was a, uh, a pilot, or is a pilot, and he was made Rear Admiral last month, and I can't think of a better and happier celebration for him than that he should have commanded the carrier force that played so large a part last Friday morning. Now, panel, I must congratulate you on that. I don't know how you reached into outer space and got it out so quickly, but we'll get all the cards back again. Let's see what you can do with a second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Mm -hmm. Pat Collins, right? Is it Miss or Mrs. Collins? Miss. Miss Collins, and where are you from, Miss Collins? Chicago. Chicago? Chicago. Oh, fine. 
Well, here's our panel. May I present the panel, Miss Collins? Would you join me here, please? You know how we keep score? Mm -hmm. Fine, then let me let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we can tell you that Miss Collins is salaried and uh, deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Cerf. Miss Collins, how often have you been told that you're a startlingly uh, like Judy Holliday in appearance? Quite often. <laughs> have you? Mm -hmm. uh, have you got anything yourself to do with show business? Yes. Uh, do you perform before the public in some way or other? Yes. Uh, does, the, does the public see you in person rather than on the television screen? Yes. Do you appear, have you ever appeared in nightclub acts? Yes. Do you have any music connected with the work that you do? Yes. Are you a singer? No. That's well. one down and nine to go, Miss French. Do you move around at all in your act? Yes. Would you be liable to go from uh, two different tables in the uh, course of your performance? Might you go, if you were performing on a floor, would you go to a table perhaps or another table for anything or for any reason rather than remaining in the center of the stage? More conference. Don't look at me like that. I don't know why I asked that question. <laughs> Not allowed to mingle with the guests. Sometimes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything in your act that has to do with uh, the supernatural or mind reading? No. <coughs> that covers tea leaves, you know, John, so it don't make trouble for me on the block. Actually, there again, it covers a, a great deal of ground if you're using the terms generally and you know I am. I would say that, that without meaning to give you any information that would tend to uh, focus your thinking rather yeah. than uh, you know do <laughs> your best service with uh -huh. yes is there anything about you that would be a fortune hunter <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say fortune hunter and I know that's a fortune teller <laughs> no that makes it two down and eight to go Mr. Richard <laughs> You, you do visit the tables in the nightclubs? Sometimes. Sometimes. After the performance? Sometimes. <laughs> Not during your performance? Sometimes. So that you'd get uh, no. a no for no. that. That cost it three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgall. Uh, Miss Collins, do you work alone? Yes. Do you ever take anything away from members of the audience temporarily? <laughs> no. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Collins, I believe we've ruled out now. I just want to make sure. We've ruled out mind reading. Have we not? We have ruled that out and specifically. And ruled out fortune telling. Right. We have not ruled out magic, have we? No, we have not ruled out magic. Do you magic. do any feats of ledger domain with your hands? Or do any kind of tricks, magic tricks? No. That's five. Now we've ruled that out. We've That's five down and five to go, Miss French. <laughs> Do you use any equipment in your service, other than your, whatever your costume is? <laughs> no. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Richard. Uh, you're a performer in nightclubs. Do you impersonate, do you give uh, impressions of artists? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you move about quite a good deal? Yes. Uh, are you in any sense a dancer? No. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. For heaven's sake. But you do appear in person mm -hmm. and uh, alone. Mm -hmm. Is there any hypnotism connected with what you do? <laughs> I'm afraid so. We'll hypnotize daily. <laughs> <laughs> Professional hypnotist is right. Actually, uh, Ms. Collins does do it in the nightclub. You also work with doctors mm -hmm. and dentists, you know, when they, there are people who can be helped tremendously. In fact, 
Uh, Miss Collins was helped herself tremendously. You were once... Um, paralyzed. Paralyzed and, and uh, had to use a wheelchair and hypnotism helped her. And that's how uh, Miss Collins became interested in it herself. And she has a nightclub act. We answered all questions fairly because sometimes Miss Collins puts, as I... Now, you correct me if I'm wrong. You put people under hypnosis while you're on the stage and they're out at the table and then has to go out to the table to, to uh, take up from that point. Well, I go back after all of my shows, too, and wake them up properly wake after I send properly. them down. <laughs> and, uh, How do you get them back from their hypnotic state, Miss Collins? What do you do? Just give you just them... wake them up. But yes, there's but a way of waking them up properly. I mean, Bucket of cold it. water, man. It is nothing. <laughs> well, I'm kid about that. They used to do that in the old days with water in the face. But mm. the proper ways, you just tell them to awaken, feeling wonderful, and so on and so on. There are proper ways to do it, but they come right out of it. You mean you can tell them to wake up feeling wonderful and they will? Feeling wonderful. They eight and hours what they minute, and they minute said, put me to sleep and tell me to wake up. Can they remember exactly, Miss Collins? Pardon? Uh, can they remember exactly what happened just before? Always, unless the hypnotist gives them amnesia. I see. Yes. Uh, mm. I'm a firm believer in not doing that. Most hypnotists do, but I want them to remember they had fun. Yes. And to pay the bill. <laughs> yes. And to pay the bill. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, you, Miss Gordon. Collins. It's nice to have you on What's My Line, and we nearly puzzled the panel. Thank you. Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which, as you all know, the panel is always blindfolded. Are the blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes. sir. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? go to a different form of questioning for our mystery panel or a mystery celebrity. You ask one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin with um, Arlene Francis. Well, that reception leads me to believe you are completely unknown. <laughs> <laughs> are you in uh, the theater? <laughs> Mr. Richard? Are you a man? <laughs> One down and nine to go, Miss Gilgal. Uh, have you any records? Sister Sir? Are you in any way related to me or a member of my family? <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Are you primarily known for your appearances on the stage rather than the screen? Three down and seven to go, Mr. Richard. Therefore, you are primarily known for your appearances on the screen. Excellent. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, this gets to be a little bit difficult, with our guest's permission. Uh, screen is a big word and covers many things. Oh. And I would ask Mr. Richard here uh, if he would define what he means by screen. Uh, screen or scream? Screen. Screen. Uh, I meant the movie screen. The uh, movie. Oh, thank you. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Gilgal. <laughs> Did you by any chance sing the theme song for a movie which is now playing on Broadway? <laughs> five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. In the course of uh, your act, have you ever removed any particular articles of clothing? <laughs> <laughs> Six down, four to go, Miss Francis. Well, is the screen the television screen as opposed to the motion picture screen? What the? Richard. <laughs> Richard. Uh, me? Uh, would you be Miss Lucille Ball? Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you ever appear on a panel show? You mean regularly, Dorothy? Well, I, that's really what I meant, yes. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, do you appear on any weekly, regular television production of any kind? Yeah. <laughs> Miss Francis? Oh. Uh, 
You wouldn't want to say that last yes again, would you? Oh. <laughs> Come on, just for the fun of it. Speak in your own voice. That isn't it. <laughs> Come on, what do you care? You've got the $50. Say, <laughs> say two words in your own voice. <laughs> oh, well, that helps. Are you on a daily, on a daily, are you on a weekly show on television with a man by the name of Gary Moore? Yes. Come on, speak in your own voice. <laughs> All right, then, Judy Garland. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, she knows. I'm, I'm kidding her. Is it Carol Burnett? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Practicing and practicing. <laughs> it was a yes that did it. I know. Oh, you did it wonderfully. You sounded too. just like Gypsy Rose Lee to me. <laughs> I wish I looked like her. <laughs> well, I must say, Miss Carroll, it's a great tribute to you to receive uh, the ovation that you received oh. in when you came Thank in tonight. You. And that wonderful man that you are with, Gary Moore, I should think, take great pride not only in you, but also in the fact that. Uh, all of you have earned so oh. fine a place in the heart of the American We all take people. great pride in Gary Moore. He's the greatest. Ah, that he is. Thank you very Thank much you. for being with us. Nice to have you on the show. Well, I must rule that you've done very well so far tonight, panel. I'm proud of you, and we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate spot. And now let's meet another contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Right there. Lewis. Maley, right there? Right. Uh, Mr. Maley, where are you from, sir? Philadelphia. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania? Yeah. Fine, may I present the panel? Now, do you know how we keep score? Yes, sir. Fine, then we'll let the audience here and at home know exactly what your line is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Panel, I will tell you, because we have very little time, this is a rather special category we're in. We'll tell you that Mr. Maley is salaried and he deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with Mr. Richard. Uh, Mr. Maley, do you enjoy your work? Yes. It's very important, I think. Um, a product. Uh, is the product uh, for both men and women? Yes. Is it more for one than the other? No. 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 One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could any one of us on the panel enjoy your product? Yes. yes. <laughs> Could I hold it in my hand? Yes. Would it be found in the home? Yes. Yes. Would it be found in other places, too? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Would you say it was useful rather than decorative? Useful rather than decorative? Yes, I'd say that if we must take a choice between the two, we'd say it was useful rather than decorative. Is it solid rather than liquid? Solid. Mm -hmm. Can it be eaten? No. <laughs> uh, well, I think here, with your permission, technically, we, we have to broaden the term. Eaten here, you mean put into the, the, put into the mouth, mouth. And, and in some way or another uh, used by the mouth. In, the, in that context, we could say yes, I think, mean, don't you? Uh, well, is it... Uh, could I hold it in one hand? Did I establish that? You is, could. Is it good for you? We'd like to think it was good for everybody, wouldn't we? It could, you know, I, we'd have to take a very broad span of human mm -hmm. experience and say that it's relaxing, it's good for you, it's nutritious, it could be good for you, it has good for the gums, the teeth, it could be good for you, good mm -hmm. for the jawbone, it's good for you, you know, mm -hmm. all that. All right, may I rule out chewing gum? Uh, no, no, that we oh, could no. <laughs> no. Now, actually, I'm going to have to throw the cards in, and I must congratulate you on this, because actually, Mr. Maley is a bubble gum tester. Oh. Bubble gum, Bubble gum tester. He works. This is a flare, flare yeah. package. Flare so but they make six million pieces of bubble gum a day. 
six million pieces of bubble gum a day. Mr. Uh, Maley is really a, a chemical engineer, has a degree in chemical engineering, is head of their research and does the testing of their products. May I thank you, sir, for being with us? And what's my line? Nice to have you here. We've run a bit out of time. With the panel's permission, I will say good night for all and thank you for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. The band boy, is it modest to tell people bringing up buddies a great show? Not really, love. And remember to say, tomorrow night on most of these stations, protection for your home, your family, as well as your car. You're in good hands with all states.